let's dive into the palette again. And this time we're going to have a look at this little component not many people know about. And it is the Canton UV Helper. And what the Canton UV Helper is doing basically is uh, taking the UV map output of the Canton mapper and use it to also apply the mapping in a way, but in a way more efficient way. So, um, yeah, let's just jump in and I will show you some tricks later on. Uh, just for, for testing right now, we are going to create uh, two simple shapes here. So, something like this and uh, maybe like this. And one of the new additions, I think it's inside a while now too, is the texture ID. And the texture ID is actually used for the Canton UV helper later on. So um, while we have this open, let's have a look here and set this ID to two. And let's have a look at the second output here of the UV uh, <coughs> of the Canton. So let's put in a null. And you can see that it's not just the regular red and green UV map we already know, but instead it is uh, also blue. And when we take a look at the pixel values in this image by right clicking and selecting display pixel values, we can see that the first shape here on the left has a blue value of one. And the right shape here has a blue value of two. And this corresponds with the texture ID we just gave the shape inside of our counter. So uh, when we change this value here to, to a three value, we can now see that the blue value of our uh, shape, of our right shape here is set to three. And this is going to correspond with the uh, input index of uh, of our Canton uh, UV helper. So we are going to close our editor window here. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to lock our null here. And we're just going to disable Canton mapper. This way Canton is no longer eating any resources. Now let's grab the Canton UV helper component from the palette and drop it into our project and we are getting an error. We actually not want to use uh, the whole component, but there's just one simple sh uh, GLSL shader script inside and it's this GLSL multi one. Uh, we're just going to cut it and get rid of our Canton UV helper here and paste the GLSL shader back in. Then we're going to drop it into the input. And as you already can see, there's something going on. <clears throat> but to see what's really going on, we're going to create a movie file in, or better, two. And we're going to make one of it moving. So now when we put in our movie file in, in this component here, you see that suddenly we have our banana and it's corresponding with the UV map of this uh, rectangle here. And if we put in our second input, uh, our second movie file in as the second input, you can now see that we also have this one mapped. And this whole little shader consisting of one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines does basically the same what would happen when we jump back into Kantan and put in the textures, activate, and put in this texture here, and activate, and now when we take a look 
we see they are basically the same with the difference that the Kantan mapper here is running at around two point yeah, maybe more like 2.5 up to 3 milliseconds on the CPU and up to 1 millisecond on the GPU, whereas our uh, GLSL multi, our uh, UV helper here, is running at a really nice 0 0.08, 0 0.1 millisecond to do the whole mapping. Another really nice thing uh, about this uh, whole UV maps here you can do is when we now create a new UV map. So let's create this and move our uh, elements here around a little bit. Let's rotate this one just like this. And we create a second null here. Put in the input and we lock this one also. And now if we use Oh. Okay, so we have to actually watch it for it to update, which is quite interesting, but better make the error once and know what's going on. So now that we have our new UV map here, which looks different to this one, we can lock it also. And now if we change the uh, input here, to our second one, you can see it switches just right over. So this way, when we implement a switch for our first input, we can now use our, uh, we can now switch really fast between different inputs. You can do use this also to uh, create different mappings with the same um, uh, different texture mappings really easily. So you don't have to play around with any of your components here. But instead, what you can do is we're going to create a new null here, going to open our Kantan window. And now we're just going to switch around the texture IDs here. And we're going to lock this one too and feed it into our switch here. And now when we switch between input one and two, you can see that because we have a texture inside, so we have to get rid of the texture here. So let's unlock this, open. And now this way, if we switch between our two inputs here, we can easily have different textures applied to our mapping. So this takes some uh, preparation, but now we can delete the whole counter mapper and we are off with a really not performance hungry way of uh, changing up our mappings on the go when they are prepared, probably.